yeah uh, my brother jonathan brought home a classical guitar uh, so i would have been like 11 or 12 and he was playing that and uh, and then he started being in bands and i think that's when i became interested in and in figuring out what it was but like you know learning it you know when he was gone i would sneak into his room and play his guitar <laughs> and yeah so I, I think that's yeah was pretty much that was the that was definitely the reason why i gravitated towards that we had a piano as well but it was always it was kind of always out of tune but i liked playing that as well but i never took any formal uh lessons on that but i, I always loved the sound of piano and and uh and like the acoustic guitars so when you were young and and you saw your brother playing in bands, was he like a hero of yours? Like that seemed like the coolest thing on earth. Yeah, totally. Yeah, just the fact that you're like creating something and then you're going out and working with other people and then bringing it back and and you know hearing what that sounds like with like a group of people playing on on the same song. And uh, yeah, it was definitely something that was like really mind blowing for sure. Like, like, oh, you can actually develop this into something that sounds different and. And uh, yeah. Hmm. So that you said that was Jonathan, correct? Yes. Yeah. So so that means you have multiple brothers. You have is it Michael is another brother? Uh, Michael is another brother. Uh, how many how brothers. many kids? How many offspring are there here? <laughs> there's eight. There's eight Whoa. boys and one girl. Uh, nine boys and one girl. So eight brothers and one sister. Holy! Is everyone musical? Family. Is this a musical dynasty going? Everyone. On? Well, I don't know. Like I think that um, Kathleen. I think a few of them are more uh, classically trained, uh, but yeah, I think the Kathleen and Thomas and Jonathan and me and Michael kind of gravitated more to music. I think so. There's like half of us that are kind of into very different kinds of music, I guess. Mm. So what what was it like growing up in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia? Uh, can, do you think it shaped you as a musician and as a person? Uh, growing up in Yarmouth, um, sorry, it's, it's kind of some of the questions are kind of cutting in and out because of the my connection here, but um, no problem. Um, so yeah, Yarmouth growing up, uh, it was awesome. I mean, I think it's like one of those places that has a lot of natural beauty, like the actual town. So I think it's, it's um, and there's, a, but there's not, not a lot of things to do as well. So you go for lots of walks and uh, I think it really, um, it's good for someone that's kind of like, starting to write songs and write music to have that kind of space. There's not a lot of distraction from, from what you're doing. And so I think it was actually really good in that sense. Um, in the sense of like actually doing it as a career, it was like kind of over a little bit daunting being from Yarmouth because it's like a very small town and it wasn't really super open to kind of like alternative forms of um entertainment i guess uh so it was tough in that way uh growing up it was difficult getting like a venue to play but a lot of people in yarmouth really liked um really liked music so there was there was definitely an audience for it as, uh, when which is good which is definitely lucky like i'm sure there's lots of towns where it's like people don't even like like going to live shows people are more into yeah. like horseback riding and yeah like, exactly baseball. yeah yeah Totally. Yeah. Whereas Yarmouth, it really had um, kind of this built in kind of appreciation. People really liked it. So it was it was good in that sense. But also like it definitely felt like um, you had to kind of like go beyond, you know, I, I think in, in, I think I felt the same way even in, when, when we were in Halifax that, that you kind of feel like, there, you know, you have to start. Um, it's definitely a hard thing to like. Uh, yeah, I guess being a musician, you have to go. You have to be someone that you have to be willing to travel and and um, kind of seek out your opportunities. I guess. So, so when you mentioned that you know growing up in Yarmouth, the the outdoors, it it triggered all these songs of yours that mentioned the outdoors and forests <laughs> and mountains and water. So it's it's kind of cool that that uh, that does show up in your music along the way. That influence. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I definitely going back to Yarmouth, I find it a really good place to write music, even even now. I like, just go there for like a few weeks in the summer and work on stuff. It's definitely like a. Yeah, even now, it's like a place where it's a it, yeah, there's not a lot of distraction and it's a really nice place just to walk around, hang out. <laughs> So, so when we were 16, iPods did not exist, but if they did exist, what music 
would we find on your iPod? Um, there would be a lot of like uh, Eric's trip. There would be a lot of um, a lot of stuff on Sub Pop, probably. Uh, like, I mean, Nirvana, Eric's trip, Afghan Wigs. Really like them. Dinosaur Junior was a really big. I was a really big fan of that. Um, I think that would have been probably. I think I probably would have started liking the Deftones around then. <laughs> the the so early Deftones and like early Deftones, Adrenaline. Yeah. And, or is it around the fur? The name of the album, or that's just one of those. Songs? Yeah, I would have liked. I would have. I would have liked that as well. And um, yeah, I think. I think I would have been pretty into that kind of alternative rock music, I guess, of that era. Nothing, so, nothing out of the ordinary, I don't think. Okay. And uh-huh. and did those artists you just named as, as being your favorite and being on your, your imaginary iPod, would you say those are the biggest influences on your actual music as well? Or did the influences come from elsewhere? Yeah, I don't know. I think there's definitely plays into, yeah, I think it would play definitely into my overall kind of, aesthetic i guess um but i, I like a, like i love a lot of like classical music and i and i think like kind of in my 20s i kind of went back to kind of uh, music like roy orbison and and buddy holly and and kind of older uh music that my dad probably would have liked as well um and yeah and a lot of classical stuff uh so i think it's just like but i think initially that was kind of that was kind of what inspired me to like want to be in a band and and do that and and uh yeah but i think over over time you kind of you you delve into different um different musical things kind of like uh pop up and interest you along the way how early on did did you know you had something special going on with music where you thought okay i have something here that that i can share with the world like this can be my gift to the world to to make the world a better place is there a memory of how early on you're like, I think I might have some talent or you just didn't know and you just, <laughs> and you just plowed forward? Yeah, I think, I, I think that it was like uh, not even necessarily knowing that I had talent or anything like that, but I just feel like it was um, just something where I kind of couldn't stop making up. So- I like, couldn't stop making up songs. Like, you know, you have the kind of thing where you're just inspired by um, just writing songs and, and the kind of whatever the... Um, what, what it would be like the um, just the creation process was a really exciting thing that I really loved. And also like, and when, once you take it into like a band setting, I, just that being able to create something with, with the group of people that has its own feeling that. Um, so I think I, I, I don't know if I really felt they ever had more talent than anyone else. I, I just think it was like, uh, it was more just like a, obsessive kind of like, Oh, we're going to create this thing. And, and after, after you make up enough songs, you can, make a record. And I think that's kind of the way that I've sort of approached it. <laughs> you mentioned that your brother, Jonathan playing live, uh, kind of inspired you and got you excited. At what age did you start performing live? Um, I would have been probably 15 or 16, I think probably 16 would have been my first, no 15. I think we played a, um, it wasn't a battle of the bands, but it was some kind of like, winter carnival or something that was at our uh, junior high school so we started a band and played like one song there one yeah, song you give the people thing. the goods and you get out of there. <laughs> yeah, you, you get out of there we had our one song i think it was like it's time for one song, song and one called. song only yeah exactly here we are here's our soon um so i think we did that and then um that would have been our first, yeah, that would have been our first live, my first live performance. How, how was the response? People liked it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was just like, what? I don't know. I think just, uh, I think, I think that was, a, I guess, and I, I guess people were just like interested in that people could play music. I don't know. Like, oh, they they can actually play guitar. Crazy. I don't know. Hmm. So I think they did. Maybe I did. Maybe I had, maybe something you make up in your head. As it, you're playing, <laughs> it, it, this. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of. I think it's from Family Guy. It might have been The Simpsons, but I think it's Family Guy where they're, uh, you know, they're they're on drugs and they remember. They think back to last night they performed live, and it's like people loved it. And it was amazing, and then it shows you what actually <laughs> happened for those that weren't on drugs, and it's like they were horrible, and everyone hated. Yeah, it. exactly. So, so sometimes yeah. memory kind of works in our favor when it's yeah, might not exactly, be the truth. Yeah. 
yeah, it's sort of a moldable memory is a moldable thing. You're like, no, that was really, really good. Really <laughs> strong. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a genius. Yeah. Uh, so when, <laughs> when, when we're young, uh, as musicians, a lot of times our parents or our friends tell us, you know, that's, that's a dream that can't be attained. Like you should probably just get a regular job. You should have a backup plan. Did, did that ever come into play with you? And how did you get over that if it did? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we all, like I went to school, uh, university, so I definitely had it in the back of my mind. I was like, didn't, know if it was especially entering into university i didn't think that i was necessarily going to even try to become a musician um and i think i just i just ended up meeting the guys in winter sleep and and working on stuff with them and it kind of became more of a we released like one record and it just felt like it was like something that was like kind of catching a little bit so it was like definitely like pretty definitely baby steps towards like becoming a band you know what I mean I think we all uh we all completed our school and all that stuff before we really um like went before we really started trying to do it um but yeah I, I, like my parents were never you know were never really intense about me they, you know they, they I never got the sense that they didn't want me to do it um so that's a good thing it it, you know, it's notoriously hard to make a living as a musician, regardless of talent, sometimes, oh, regardless, yeah, yeah. sometimes regardless of success, even just because there's so many different hands that are in, in the pot that at the end, there's not always that much left <laughs> left for you. Um, yeah, you're know, like the last. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So knowing that, was there ever a fear of not being able to make a living as a musician or was it always just, this is who I am. This is what I have to offer. This is what feels right. This is where I find my flow state. You know, if I didn't pursue this, I would regret it forever. And the money will figure itself out if I'm doing what I love. Yeah. I think it's more the latter. Like, I think there's the, the, even now it's like, you know, you don't, it's not like it's something that's a guaranteed, um, income stream you know what i mean so it's just like you're just trying to uh figure it out and, and hope that people care enough to support it i guess and and it seems it's worked out so far but it's like uh yeah it's, a, it's definitely a precarious um livelihood <laughs> for sure but yeah you just do it and then you hope that you know what you have to offer is something that people are into and and uh and yeah that's i guess that's that's it I, I remember reading an article where the interviewer was asking asking about uh, your your single America going to number one on the rock charts in Canada, and you had a funny response that was like, "Oh, that might give me like a bonus fifty dollar check or something." Like you just had a, a very funny musician response uh, that, that <laughs> triggered right now when we're talking about this. Um, what what was it like hearing your songs on the radio for the first time? Uh, do you remember kind of the first time it kicked in? You're like, whoa, that's me. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, totally. and I guess on the same note, maybe seeing your album on a chart for the first time. What was that like? What did that feel like? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, I remember hearing, I think our first song that ever got played on the radio was uh, Orca. It was a winter sleep song. Um, and I remember I was working at, I was like doing like, uh, it was kind of like busing tables, I guess, at a restaurant. And it was like really early in the morning at like 6 a.m. And it came on. I was like, yes, that's awesome. Um, and then uh, in terms of charting, uh, yeah, I think that would have been like Weedy Ghost would have been the first like real experience with that. And so that was just, I don't know, it's just really exciting to know that there's lots of people that are hearing your song on the, on the radio. And you just, uh, yeah, it's exciting. It, yeah, because you're like, I think in the back of your mind, you're, it's you know that it's opening doors for touring and that kind of thing that that weren't there before. So it's it, it was great. It's great in that in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. A, a single on a radio is is it's almost like a business card. It's like your your business card gets handed out to all these people and then more opportunities present themselves, you know? It's, yeah, it's totally. A, yeah. It's a great uh promo tool. When you heard the song at 6 a.m. In, in the restaurant, was there anyone else around, any coworkers you could share that moment with? I didn't share it. Like, I was actually, they were, but I decided kind of just like, yeah, it's cool. I didn't, I didn't say anything about it. 
I was just like stoked, silently stoked, and then just went home. <laughs> but it was cool. I feel like silently stoked is the name of a future song. Well, yeah, <laughs> just store that somewhere back in the memory bank. Um, 